Hello everyone, my name is Winter Wang. I'm here to give a presentation for my thesis project, Device Level Power Electronic System Emulation for Hardware in the Loop Applications. First, I would thank my supervisor, Dr. Ankada Dinamaki, for his insightful instruction for this research. This presentation contains four sections. Section 1 is introduction. Section 2 is physics-based device model hardware emulation. Section 3 is case studies and experimental results. Section 4 is conclusions. There are several motivations for this work. First, an accurate physics-based power electronic device hardware emulation has not yet been reported in literature due to its huge computational burden. Second, high fidelity device level modeling does have its benefits, especially due to the current trend to miniaturize power electronics in virus in various applications whose performance can be influenced by high-frequency speech devices. Third, detailed device-level models would provide insight into high-frequency effects such as device stresses, parasitics, electromagnetic interference, noise issues, and the suppression. Hardware in the loop simulator, HEO simulator, is an embedded hardware system which connects to the external system and the test by various I.O. interfaces. Health simulators have advantages low cost and of excluding the possibility to damage the physical devices and the unexpected transient conditions. Health simulators have been gaining popularity in many industries such as automotive, aerospace, and electric power systems. Health simulators can be classified into controller hill and power hill. There are several advantages of FPGAs for health applications. First, FPGAs have inherent parallel hardware architecture allowing a natural low latency realization of complex algorithms. FPGAs have very large capacity devices comprised of millions of logic building blocks to provide such hardware resources. APJs have mature and uh, advanced design and development tools for rapid prototyping, allowing users the choice of written texture, VHDL or Verilog, or schematic design entry methods. APJs have fast clock speeds and high-speed transceivers to communicate with external devices. APJs are reconfigurable and allow firmware to be reprogrammed. APGs is typically a two-dimensional symmetrical cell B array. array. Uh, a, C, a CLB contains two slices. Each slice contains a lookup table and uh, flip-flops. APG design flow begins with design specification and uh, HDL coding. Behavioral simulation and synthesis should be performed too. The implementation process uh, contains map, place, and route. Also, static timing analysis should be performed too. After all this uh, has been done, the generated bitstream file should be downloaded to the APJ board and verified. There are several challenges of emulating device level models. First, the emulation uh, needs to solve typically a large set of coupled nonlinear equations. Second, the emulation should be performed within a time step of few nanoseconds to capture the high frequency device behavior. The emulation demands to use a variable time step for computational efficiency. Most importantly, circuit size for practical applications require to model enough nonlinear switches. We begin our hardware design uh, with formulating the physics-based power diode model. As can be seen from the figures, the physics-based power diode model contains five major phenomenological characteristics, including reverse recovery, forward recovery, emitter recombination, contact resistance and junction capacitance. All those effects, including 
uh, reverse recovery, emitter recombination, and junction capacitance are modeled as dynamic inductance and the equivalent current. Especially, the forward recovery is modeled as nonlinear resistance. After all these values have been calculated, they um, combine the 3x3 three three matrix of the conductance matrix of diode and the equi equivalent current vector of diode. This figure shows the structure of the power diode hardware module on LPJ. It contains three stages. Stage 1 contains a junction limit unit, uh, which is used to limit the pin junction voltage between successive new iterations. Stage 2 contains four units, which run in parallel. Stage 3 receives the dynamic conductance and the equivalent current vector current and the nonlinear resi resistance uh, to combine the conductance matrix equivalent current vector of the diode. This figure shows the structure of the reverse recovery unit. The current and the conductance um, uh, run the calculation for the current and conductance uh, is, fo is falling in parallel. Uh, the purple area of the hardware resources contribute to both the calculation of the current and the conductance. Especially, the values uh, inside the yellow box is the constant signals, which uh, should be pre-calculated offline. The IGBT module um, is designed to. The left figure shows a phenomenological circuit of IGBT. As can be seen, the inner BJT effect um, is have its base current to be fed by the inner MOSFET. The right one is its analog equivalent current. All the two main effects, um, including BJT and MOSFET, are modeled as, as current and capacitance. Those current and capacitance are nonlinear, and they are uh, subject to discretization and linearization. The discretization use trapezoidal rule and uh, and the, those values being have been converted to dynamic dynamic inductance and equivalent current too. In turn those dynamic inductance and equivalent current combine the five by five matrix the matrix of IGBT and uh, equivalent current vector. This figure shows the detailed structure of IGBT hardware module on FVG. It contains four stages. Stage one contains two junction limit units and the charge limit unit. They are used to limit the PN junction and the charge variation between successive Newton iterations. Stage 2 contains 8 units run in parallel. Especially, there are some subunits inside the anode base and current units, which connects to some the units including capacitor CDSJ and uh, capacitor CCER and CEB units. These units have, be, have to be triggered at the right time. Stage 3 contains avalanche multiplication current unit and uh, capacitor C-mount unit, which runs in parallel. Stage 4 
receive the dynamic conductance equivalent current um, from the previous three stage stages and combine them into the conductor matrix and equivalent current vector, the so IGBT. This figure shows a detailed structure of IMOS unit. There are three capacitors and the three layer of multiplexers selecting the temporary results from the calculation and the three conditions and send the, these results to the output. This is a detailed structure of the power converter hardware model. The power diode hardware module and the IGBT hardware module is contained in interval 2. Also in interval 2 there are linear module. All their dynamic conductance and the equivalent current vector uh, are sent to the the power converter con conductance matrix and current vector unit module 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 uh, to combine the conductor matrix and uh, dynamic uh, the equivalent current vector of the whole power converter uh, system to be solved by a faster linear solver. In interval 1, the current time step should be decided as well as a PWM switching signal of the IGBT. Interval 3 is used to send the outputs to the DAX. The detailed structure of variable time step control module and the variable time step output module is shown in this slides, slide. The three layer of multiplexer are used to decide the current time step based on the, uh, the number of new iterations from the last time step calculation. The PWM value is pre-stored in the ROM. In the variable time step output module, the current time step um, is divided by the minimum time step to get an integral value, which in turn decides uh, um, the number of storage storage of the prospective output results to FIFO register. Also, output pace control units uh, are, are is used to um, control the refresh rate of the FIFOs. This shows the structure of the parallel gauss jordan units. This solver is featured by deep parallelism in both forward elimination and backward substitution as a cost of using extra hardware resources. The pivot rate is very fast to as fast as two clock cycles each step. The experimental setup is shown in the right figure. Xilinx Vortex 7 J has been used which connects to the DAC boards. The DAC boards in turn connect to the oscilloscope. The test circuit is a DCDC bar converter. From the hardware resource table, we can see most of the hardware resources contribute to the design of IGBT. This slide shows a discrete time linearized system equation. It's a five dimension no, equation system. The DC DC bar converter model um, is built on Sabre, which is shown in this slide. 
This figure shows the uh, emulation results and uh, its comparison with Saba. The upper figures is from um, from oscilloscope. The lower one are from Saber. As can be seen, seeing they are, they show good agreement. This figure shows good agreement too. Especially the right one is transient figures. The detailed switching time has been marked out um, at the at the upper figure. These three are transient figures too. Also, the switching time has been marked out. This figure is power dissipation of FPGA um, design for the IGBT and diode. When the switching frequency increase, as can be seen, FPG and Sigma agree closely at low and high frequencies. The FPG switching laws and diode reverse recovery laws roll fast. IGBT conduction laws increase much slowly. Diode conduction laws remain almost constant. This is another test circuit. It's a two-level DC-AC converter. Since the DC-AC converter is, is, a, is a big one, so uh, it's divided into three identical nonlinear sub-circuits. This is a 7x7 discrete time linearized system creation for the nonlinear sub-circuit. This figure shows a linear sub-circuit. All the components, um, inc including the three-phase loads, can be solved by these equations. This figure shows a two-level DC-AC converter model, which is built on Saber. This figure shows the steady-state results and its comparison with Saber. The left gray figures are from oscilloscope. The right blue one are from Saber. All of them show good agreement with each other. The left figure is the transient figures. The upper two is turn on transient, the lower two is turn off transient. The right one is a power loss analysis figure. All of them show good agreements. Conclusions The concept of modularization is introduced to the physics based device level power electronic system uh, emulation. Also, this thesis introduced a parallel IGBT and power diode hardware design. The concept of variable time step strategy is introduced to the field of hardware in the loop simulation. Also, a fast parallel Gaussian linear solar is designed. Most importantly, Validation is made using Sigma, a sophisticated device-level commercial simulation software. Steady state and transient results are observed as well as power analysis. As the end of this presentation, I'd like to thank Synopsis for donation of Sigma lies during the course of the research from 2012 to 2014. That's all of my presentation. Thank you for listening.